Hey, it's Matt from Custom Car Grills with a mesh install for the 2011 through 14 Dodge Charger. After you have the stock grill frame removed from the bumper, you should have something that looks like this. What we're going to do in this video is remove the crosshair from this and install a mesh piece. Let's flip it around so we can work on the back for a moment. The old clips will be the first to go, so let's dip our toe in the water with the first cut. I've got my trusty Dremel here and have it equipped with their number 543 cutting and shaping wheel. This will make short work of the plastic, and while the outer perimeter clips are technically the only ones we're after, I'll cut them all off. Then let's focus on the screw mounts. Unfortunately, these have to be cut too. There's realistically no way to keep them with the repair that we'll need to make later. Just a simple cut and some shaving with the top of the wheel will work. You don't need to overthink this step. To bridge the gap of the openings, I've cut some scrap mesh piece to roughly the shape of the gap, with not much extra on any side. Some uncut scrap pieces can be requested when ordering, but they're not included by default. A little bit of tape can hold these in place, and then some aluminum HVAC tape on the top edge will be a useful addition to make a lip on the back. I'll then repeat these steps for the other three gaps. To fill in these areas, I'll use some Plyo Grip Plastic Repair Number 3, though other two-part repair epoxies like this 3M version will work just as well. This can be dispensed right on top of the mesh like this. Essentially, we're starting to rebuild this area before it's actually cut out. The added benefit of doing that now is that we'll know that the grill frame won't easily distort later because we're reinforcing it now before we lose the crosshair. After dispensing some plyo grip, I'll cap the end off by folding the HVAC tape up. Now let it fully cure and then remove the tape. What we're going to be left with is a nice strong bridge between these two solid OEM sections. Now it's time to apply a little bit of repair material on the back of the mesh on the repair spot. This will strengthen it up some, but it's important not to apply too much here. I'll use a Bondo spreader to scrape off any excess. We need to be mindful not to add too much thickness to the back of this. Here's a quick look at mine after all the spots have cured. It's feeling pretty solid, and now is the time to cut out the center section. To do the cutting here, I'll grab an open-ended saw blade. These work great for getting through the grill bars and close to the edge. I'm staying just a little bit away from the edge so I don't cut too deep but I'm also staying close enough so that I don't need to do a lot of extra sanding later on. The plastic isn't super thick, and this is a pretty easy step to do by hand. There's no need to overkill this with power tools, and once all the cuts are made, the center of the grill can be lifted out and thrown away. And this is what we have left. It's pretty rough looking right now, but I promise it'll start to take better shape soon. There's going to be a fair bit of sanding we'll need to do, and while it's possible to do by hand, I'd recommend some power tools. I'll be using a 3 inch grinder for much of this, but a mini belt sander can also be very handy as well. For the rough sanding at the beginning, I'll be using an aggressive grit like 36 to 80. This sanding needs to take the repair material just ever so slightly below the height of the surrounding stock area thickness. This is what it should look like after the initial round of sanding. The spots that were filled in are obvious to see and will be far from perfect right now. Let's get the repair material out again and fill in some of the repairs again from the front. This is also a good time to patch up any holes or extreme unevenness. Once a little bit is dispensed, then a Bondo spreader can be used to contour the repair material to the shape of the grill's edge. It's okay to fill it up a pinch higher than the edge because we'll be sanding it down in just a moment. Just don't underfill it, because then we'll have to go back and add more later. Assuming that it's filled just about right, I'd suggest grabbing a sanding block and wrapping it around some 80 or 120 grit. This can be sanded by hand, like what I'm showing here, but if you have air tools like a dual action sander, then you can speed this step up quite a bit. Again, right now we're not trying to get this to perfection, but we are looking for progress in getting the edges to be nice and smooth and something that looks close to the stock grill edges. At this point, there's a little lip of an edge on the back that could use some trimming. There's an indent on my grill here. I don't want to try and smooth out. I'd rather just cut it off. An easy way to make a guide on where to cut on the repaired area is by using some tape. Just put a couple lines up against the transition area and then cut behind the line. Having a steady hand here will be important during this step, otherwise you might end up with more repairs and more sanding later on. 
After the repaired area is cut, just cut along the edge where it transitions and we'll have the back edge all good to go. Here's a quick look at a semi-repaired edge with the back of the edge cut. We're looking good, but let's go ahead and get this repair looking even better. I'll dispense out some Bondo and add a little bit of hardener and start mixing it up. This filler will start to harden up soon, so I need to move somewhat quickly. After it's mixed well, I'll lay some on the edge and contour relatively tightly to the edge. There's a little bit of artistry needed to get the edge shape just right, and again, it's fine to overfill this area just a pinch. Adding too much just means that we'll need to do a little extra sanding. And speaking of sanding, let's get at it one more time. Again, I'm using a sanding block, and with this pass, I'll be using a 180 to 240 grit. I'll later refine it down to a 320 grit on the final passes. This is what my edge looks like after going to 180 grit. It's a little rough, and it still needs some more work, but it's about 90% good. I'm going to work on the sides and the upper edge now, repeating all the steps that I had just shown. Then I'll do the final sanding passes before calling it good. This is my fully sanded grill now, after a few hours of getting it refined just right. The project involves a lot of sanding, and having the right tools as well as a little bit of practice, and those will get you some pretty good results. Now is the time to think about what color to paint the frame. The customer I'm building this for asked for a gloss black frame, which I can't really easily show the painting of. Something similar would be maybe a flat black paint job if you wanted to do it yourself, and if so, I'd recommend some of the Spraymax 1K Filler Primer first. Then use their flat black trim paint, and this is a good universal color for pretty much all chargers. Well, this is how the gloss black frame looks like, and wow is it a beauty. Check out how slick this looks, and the repaired edges look seamless. I think most people would never know that this originally had a crosshair in it. I think we're ready for the mesh piece now, so let's take a look at the mesh piece that we have for sale on our website. This is pre-cut and pre-bent specifically for the 2011 through 14 charger with all the right cuts and bends made already. The mesh is made from aluminum and has been finished with a gloss black powder coat. Let's flip this grill over and lay the mesh on the back of the grill. The bent tabs face the front of the grill and wrap around the back. To temporarily hold the mesh to the frame, I'll grab some cable ties and foam. The foam can be used to protect the paint job while the ties work to hold the mesh tight to the back of the grill. Tying the mesh on is fairly straightforward. I like feeding the tail end through the front towards the back and then looping the head of the tie around the back of the mesh. Fasten the tie and then have the head of the tie resting on the back of the mesh like what I'm showing here. The ties need to be on tight enough as to hold the mesh flush to the back of the frame. But we don't want to have the ties on here so tight that the frame gets distorted. It might also be a good idea to take a measurement before starting the mod of the height of the grill just to make sure that the top edge isn't sagging down. Once all the ties are in place, I'll cut off the tail ends and throw them away. To bond the mesh to the frame, I'm going to use more of the plastic repair material, though in a pinch it's possible to use other glues such as automotive goop if used properly. I'm just dispensing the epoxy in and around the mesh where it comes into close contact with the grill frame. The mesh intentionally doesn't have a lot of access around the back because I didn't want to add too much girth to the back of the edge so that reinstallation will be a little bit easier. Once I have it dispensed, I'm going to use a brush to even out the application and spread it a little thin so that it doesn't have a bunch of high spots. Of course, it's important not to spill any of this through the front. We're right at the end of the project, and I'd hate to have any go through the front and mess up the paint job. Try to get this all the way around the perimeter of the mesh for a solid application and then just let it cure. And once hardened, go ahead and cut off the ties and throw them away. The mesh install is now complete. Let's flip it around and see how it turned out. Oh wow, check this out. This looks stunning, and I can't believe the transformation considering what we started with. And here's how the grill from this video looks installed on a charger. Now, when it comes to the reinstallation of the completed grill, it's important to note a few things. First, it should be fairly obvious that the center vertical bar needs to be cut out of the bumper. Using a Dremel or a saw can be a good tool to cut this out. The screw mounts for the stock grill on the left and right side of the bumper will likely also need to go too. Second, let's talk about the clips that are around the edge of the grill. 
These can be challenging to fit back through the bumper. And once the grill is in place, the clips alone won't be enough to hold the grill in place long term. So to fix this, the grill will need to essentially be epoxy to the back of the bumper. The plyo grip or 3M panel bond or other equivalents can be a good glue to bond the back of the grill to the back of the bumper. And of course, make sure not to spill any through the front. It might also be a good idea to use an adhesion promoter for this step. And be sure to get the adhesive in and around the clips as well as the grill so that it's securely in place and won't be coming loose from the bumper in the future. Well, this was a fun and rewarding build that really delivered some awesome results. And this is all I have for this video. I hope you liked it. And if you have any questions, just let me know. And thanks for watching.